In this tutorial, we will see the very interesting feature to know in TV Paint, uh, the little tips to increase your animation skill. The first one is the repeat image. For the people who know TV Paint for a very long time, this feature was called in the past, the four fix. The interest of this function is to repeat a bunch of images in order to avoid just still images that doesn't move at all. In some kind of animation, especially in pencil-looking animation, when a character stops, the image is not freezing, uh, but the character, the line is still a little shaking a little bit, just to give something alive. So to imitate, to imitate this, this rendering, we will use the repeat image. So, okay, let me just draw some guy. Hope you, I hope you like my great drawing skills. So here I have drawn my first character and I will redraw again this guy. And again. And so we have our little loop. So now I will increase the duration of the last instance. And this duration will fit the total duration of the repeat image. Now to set the repeat image, I will do a right click, not on the head, but on the first exposure cell just here. So I make a right click and I have this contextual menu and I will use the repeat images and I set the repeat images value. And this value must be the previous images, and I'm talking about images, not about instances, the previous images you would like to use and to repeat. In my case, it's one, two, three. Previous images, okay. And now the forefix is set. This function works uh, so very well for animation animated in twos or in threes or even more. <laughs> so for example, if I use animation in three like this. So first of all, I will disable my uh, repeat image here because it does, it's not lo um, logic anymore since the value three means now I'm using this image, this one and this one, and it's not enough. So I will make a right click, repeat images, and I will reset the value. And now I have to be on the fourth image in the instance, so the third exposure cell. So one, two, three, and I have to be on this image, like this. I make a right click, repeat images, and I set again the repeat image value. And so as I have three instances with three images, the value must be nine. Okay. Enjoy. Another feature that can interest you will be explained with this little animation. So you'll notice at the beginning and at the end of every layer we have these kind of handles just here. Both handles uh, allow you to, to recalculate uh, the number of images or instances within your animation. So let's try at the moment to increase this. So I have this panel that appears, increase layer length. So I have a bunch of choices. So for example, the most basic one are using add empty instances. So if I do so, I will create a bunch of empty images like this.
you can also create add empty exposures. So I will just create a new instance with a, a long duration, with a long exposure cell. I can also use repeat. And so we'll just repeat the last instance until uh, the moment where I uh, drop my stylus. My stylus. And I also have the stretch and interpolate. So first, uh, to explain the stretch and, inter and the interpolate checkbox, here I will show you with a little smart example. So here I have two colors, blue and red, and I would like to make a kind of fade from the blue to the red. I will use the handle, and this time I won't use repeat, add empty instances or exposes, but I will use the stretch value. If I check interpolate, I will have automatically a kind of interpolation from the blue to the red. If I don't check this, it will just increase the duration of both instances. So that can be really useful if, for example, your animation is too fast and you would like to um, make it uh, slower in, instead of stretching individually each instance is like this you can just stretch the handle like this and you stretch without checking interpolate like this But if we can increase, we can also decrease. To do so, I'll click again on the handle, and this time I will go to the left. And here I have different possibilities. I have the possibility to shrink, with or without checking interpolate. I can cut images. If I use cut images, I just cut the image, the necessary images, and so the animation will stop here. If I do so and I use shrink with interpolate. I will have my animation faster, but on some images we will see several drawings at the same time. And if I don't want this behavior, I will use shrink without interpolate, like this. So it makes the animation faster but it can cut some images. It will, actually, it will decrease the exposure value. And if it's really, really, um, if the decrease is really high, it will even cut some images. Another feature that may interest you is the feature Animate Stroke. To animate the stroke, first we will create a bunch of instances. Like this. Use a drawing shape like this. Okay. And I will hit Control when I'm drawing. At the same time, you will see the cursor is moving, and slowly we have a bunch of little dots that appears. Actually, um, animate the stroke. Just cut your line within tiny little dots following your speed. For example, if I go very fast, I will have bigger lines. And that's quite strange behavior. It can be very handy in many cases. For example, to animate ants or bacteria in a microscope or uh, of fireflies in the night. For example, we can animate a little water spread, like this. So we could imagine a little fountain. And the last function very interesting to know about animation is the starting frame. The starting frame, the start frame can be configured just here. 
So you have the choice between zero, one, and custom. So for custom, you can put any number for the starting frame. And you can also decide to animate in frames or in time code by clicking on this little stopwatch.